So you want to buy a new camera? I had this question some weeks ago and I think I can give you a clear answer now what to do if you are looking for one right now. So when it comes to buying a new gear, you should consider if you really need something new technologically advanced or you should invest money in learning a new skill. The main reason you should ask yourself is why do I want a new camera? There could be a new color scheme, there could be new technologies, but the main reason is do I really need a new camera? Do I really need to try something? Do I have a budget for it? And if I do not have a budget, if I do not have a reason to buy it and I have something decent to shoot, there is no really need to buy a new camera. The point is that limitations that you have are making you better in the long run. The first thing you should ask yourself, why do you want that new camera? Is there something new technically that the current camera cannot provide? Is there a new color scheme you want to try? Is there a new attachment that's really enticing for you to try? You should ask yourself whether it's worth of buying that and you know sacrificing that budget for that entirely new camera, this Canon 80D. I am using all the things I can to squeeze the good video out of this. The trouble is when you think that better gear will make you a better filmmaker. Not at all. Where else, where else would you put the branding? Okay guys, let's go back to the topic. The gear that you're going to buy is going to broaden your horizons. That's correct, but you should better be looking into the reason why do you want that specific camera? Because as I have said, the worst gear will make you better cinematographer in the long run because you will need to adapt to the limitations of that specific equipment. And that's not always easy, but it's very rewarding once you realize that this is the task I have at hand and I can do this, I can learn, I can utilize every little, I can push that stream to the maximum output, I can reach the threshold and this is the maximum I can get. And sometimes that will get you even further that if you'll buy that expensive airy camera. And the better cameras are also, yeah, more fun, more enticing. They have all these capabilities, external monitors, microphones, attachments. But that's another thing you should consider when you are switching to a better camera that's even like off brand what you have currently that there will be plenty of new attachments and you will need plenty of free cash to get those attachments. So, so you can always attach almost all the lenses to all the bodies, or no, like within the specific era. But basically, if we are talking about cinematography, you just need to attach that lens to the body and you are focusing manually, you are zooming manually, so there is no need to have those connector attachments with the lens and the body because you are not really using autofocus.
it's all about how you use your limitations to your advantage because you can get a better camera but if you will push those limitations with your current camera you will be surprised how far you can get and you haven't spent a single penny on something new and you will have to restart that learning process with that body because it has completely new capabilities needs completely new attachments maybe needs completely new lens system and etc the worst thing that can happen is that for example you have yourself an iphone 14 pro and you have like extremely good camera at your hands it has this cin cinematic mode where you can capture the whatever you are shooting and then afterwards decide where do you want to be focused on just click on that space and it will get in focus okay it's done by the ai and algorithms afterwards so it looks a bit of clunky here and there but it allows you to be completely versatile with the footage and record everything in focus. So, and you have this camera and you think that I need to buy some expensive camera and I want to get better footage than from my iPhone. Well, there is that very thin line because that iPhone is already very good at capturing the moment. If you have been good at filmmaking, if you know how to set up the scene or if you know how to bring that story from that specific picture, you don't need expensive camera. And you will realize that sadly too late when you will buy some expensive camera for two, three, five thousand. And you'll realize that the footage looks kind of the same. And you will realize that you haven't gained almost anything because on that camera, okay, it's more versatile for shooting longer projects because that iPhone will run out of battery and you need to call your mom or you need to call a taxi. And that camera specifically has battery to be shooting and then will run out and you can put it in a bag and use it as a heavy weight. So. Yeah, those are limitations, but you can freely buy an external power bank and you can use like one entire cycle of the battery to shoot and then you will recharge like a 50%. And with that 50%, you can buy a ticket, call a taxi and so on. Don't limit yourself to what you have in terms of equipment because there is no really limitations in that like i have my phone amazing you can put that phone wherever it's small it has been designed to be calling so it's close to your head but with the limitations that it has reached today the quality of that camera is extraordinary it has far more superior for example to my camera that i'm recording right now I am more versatile with this camera than, I'm, than I am with my phone. I know where the focus is on this camera. I know how to tweak it. I know how to access microphone and whatever. And that's one of the things that you should consider that with the cameras, you are also getting all these ports that are making your entire production easier. But think about that phone because you can buy small attachments that Osmo Go that's like a stabilizer for your phone and it's holding your phone with that MagSafe and you can just attach it to that stabilizer and you can do all sorts of movements like with your regular gimbal and use that sensor of your phone and you are suddenly you suddenly have if you're a good filmmaker and you know how to use that grading afterwards and bring that story forth you suddenly have in your hand the entire gear because if you can fool audience with that be drawn by the story they wouldn't have a time to actually compare to worse or better camera they are just blown out with the story so they won't really have time to focus that what it has been recorded on an iphone are you kidding we have ari for like four thousand dollars and recorded that with the flipping iphone for so think about this, if you're buying a camera, you have a good phone, why do you need a camera? Use that phone. You can buy those small rig attachments to your phone, so you are actually not holding your phone because it will get warmer as you are using it. And if you had a small rig, you can attach here external light, attach here microphone, it like, it's like a cage, and it's holding your phone in the middle. 
and you are using the lens of your camera, have all the attachments around, like what do you need else? Double hand grips are really good. If you are just holding with one hand, that can stumble easier. When you have two hands, much more stable. What I have realized during the past several months is that no matter how good gear you have, you should focus on the light first. There are really limitations with the older cameras and when they were using film cameras, they had the film had just one ISO. The lightning equipment and how you work with the light, that's the most thing in this entire area. I fell in love with this black and white flat profile. And it's basically if you will put the picture in black and white and you would take the middle tones completely out. You have just the highlights in white, you have darks in black, and there's nothing in between, nothing on the grayscale. It's just black and then suddenly white. Harder to take a good picture or record something in this profile because you won't be able to tell that Maybe this was not the point of my story. That's that is my point of story. That's right there Like you, you can bring it up But if you have the black and white and flat black and white You won't see anything else than what you have lightened up Learn how to use a light and how to bring the contrast in your subject or how to lighten up Focus on how to lighten up the subject's eyes Like the eyes are the windows to the soul and if you will manage if you'll find a way how to correctly expose and how to correctly blink, blink, <laughs> how, you, how to bring up that spark in the eye without the viewer's notice. Like, look to the, any TV series that did any film, they always had the spark in the eye. You can always see some light reflecting from the eye. And the eye is really helping you with this because eye is really reflective. You can lighten up just very dim light, it doesn't have to be the key light, just put it behind the camera or somewhere near the camera so you can see the reflection. And you will see that thing reflecting from the eye and creating that spark and it doesn't even need to be strong light, just something so your eyes can reflect it. Why is this black? Hello? Hello, can you bring my notes back? Yes, thank you. Like, to be honest with you, I was also in this position like a month ago that I want to buy a Canon R6. Very good camera. I wanted the R5, but my budget was not that flexible. And I wanted the R6 because I was, uh, at the beginning, I was shooting these concerts and they always want to have an ambient atmosphere inside. And that atmosphere comes with the very dim lights. And I look at the budget, I am almost at it, but that's the R series, that's a mirrorless. And all I have are with a mirror, those are all DSLRs. So I would need a reduction to attach these mirrorless lenses or my lenses to the mirrorless system. And I was really, I was focused, I found secondhand R6 for good price and suddenly a few bills came and I was not able to purchase that. Crushed, I was like, how could this happen? I have miscalculated something. But it was better for me that if I will be able to buy that R6, because despite the 4K capabilities and a full frame, I have no full-frame camera, this is also cropped APS-C in the Canon series. This is the ATD, as you have seen earlier. And uh, the problem is that I was suddenly without the capability of buying that camera, so I thought again, why was I chasing this idea of buying the Canon R6? And I realized that I wanted to get more things in the frame. You know, you have like 50mm lens and you attach the 50mm full-frame lens on my, you're getting less from the picture. And uh, the more cropped sensor you have, you're getting less and less from the, from the actual thing that the lens is capable to see. 
I wanted this R6 so I can get more things in the frame from that 50mm because that 50mm lens can get really crazy sharp photos. I once took a picture that was so crazy sharp that I was blown away. I was zooming in and it was still sharp and those details were there. I was like, wow, like I haven't shot single picture with that lens with the f5.6. I was always going for 2.8 or less. So I was trying to buy the R6 and I failed with that and then I realized I want to get more things in the frame. I thought to myself, okay, if I cannot go full frame, I can go wider on the lens. So I looked it up and I saw this 16 to 35 f2.8 L series one. Too many numbers, too many symbols, doesn't matter. It's older series from Canon and it doesn't have the image stabilization, but you can get really close to the subject if you're taking the picture with a wide opening. And it's really amazing. I'm shooting all these videos with that lens since that day and I can get the amount of space in the frame that I wanted before and I don't have to still getting further and further back from that 50 mil because I will, if I will be shooting this scene with the 50 mil over here, to get everything in focus, I will be have to be there and to move everything further away from the uh, wall. And I'm getting kind of a cranked up in here, so I don't want to move further than I have to. I bought this lens and I am like blown away by the capabilities I can do once again with the same camera. And I haven't spent that ridiculous amount of money on that Canon R6 because it would be amazing if I would have the budget for it because I think that I'm already reaching peak limitations of this camera. But I think I'm not right. I think there is still juice I can squeeze out of this machine that will get me even further. So I will keep squeezing and we'll see when this machine will kind of blow out. So to sum this up, if you are looking to buy a new camera, think about all those things that you will need to work with that equipment. Think about, you have it. Like sometimes I'm doing this procedure and it's really fun to like thought, okay, I have this camera, it's, it's in here. What I need to go shooting? Do I need an external battery? Do I need rails? Do I need Ronin? Do I need light, microphone, cables, whatever? Look it up, those specs are on the internet. You can and you will realize that, okay, I spent very high budget on this camera and I do not have the attachments. I do not have microphone, I do not have battery, I would need those rails. And I was like, oh, 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 okay. I need to put it aside and wait until I'll be able to use it. So I hope that answers your question whether you should buy a new camera, new lightning gear, or just invest some courses and learn some filmmaking techniques for yourself. Because I've heard lately, everyone can take your camera away, your lens away, but no one can take what you have learned in your head. So train that creative muscle. And if you have enjoyed the episode, there is a like button and there is a subscribe button. I have found that 700 unique visitors are coming to this channel and there is only 52 subscribers. Come on guys, fix that. There is also a comment down below to spread good words in this community and tell me how your journey is going with the buying new camera or whatever you are going in your day-to-day -day life. And as we are all about on this channel, you know it, so stay creative. It worked, yes! <laughs>